Well, good day, my friends, or our friends. It's your old pal Jordan the Lion and the beautiful Katie. Hey! And we are coming to you from the Nevada State Museum. This is uh, Nevada State College. They have a special exhibit right now on Liberace, some of his personal belongings that are uh, on display at the Thriller Villa, which is a very expensive price tag. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm not sure they let you phone or do any kind of filming or anything like that. When I called before, they never called me back. So this might be our only chance to see some of this stuff. So the Thriller Villa for what, those of you who don't know, Michael Jackson lived there. And then when he moved out, they turned it into basically a Liberace museum with a really great collection. So they have some on display here for just like two months. So let's go see it. Mm -hmm. Days with Jordan the Lion and Katie begins right now. All right, first time here. We mentioned that we came specifically for this exhibit when we got here and they said, oh, it's a really good one. Oh, look at this, time capsule. Huh. 1864 to 2014. So we'll be back here in 2064 to vlog the opening of that. So as soon as we walked in, they have the desert love buggy and it says it was the most famous auto to ever cruise Fremont Street. Says, name the desert love buggy. It made first of many appearances in the 1939 parade in Las Vegas. The car used extensively for promotional purposes almost came to personify Las, Las Vegas and the Western Last Frontier. Said it was in uh, several movies, including Rules of the Seas. So I guess if you were in the parade in early Vegas and Fremont Street, you were anybody important you'd write on that. I'm excited. This should be very cool. Um, Katie, go stand next to that candelabra. Let's see how tall that thing is. From the floor up, it is, uh, that is huge. <laughs> that was from his estate. Here's his older brother to the left, George, his sister Angelina, and then before he was Liberace, that was Young, we're trying to figure out how to pronounce his name. Is it Vlazio? Vlazi? And there he is in 1939. And then this is him in 1930. All the way over here on the right. Here they have a couple of his jackets. This one you can see has the Liberace L right there. It's gold, gold lame. So this marked his leap beyond his standard black tuxedos or suits or tails. This was the beginning of the spectacular costume changes that were to become an important part of his performances. And then this is believed to be one of the first signature jackets made for him as well. It's with a candelabra on the left breast pocket, which you can see right there. Made of a silver gray damask embellished with silver and gold, bulge beads, rhinestones, crystal colored lock rosen, seed beads, rhinestone sets, and Tiffany bounties, and AB finished rhinestones. So, a little bit of care put into this to make. Wow. Look at that. That is amazing. It says, by 1960, overexposure on television, low attendance at concerts, several court cases and magazine headlines suggesting Liberace was gay damaged his career. But with the help of his talent agent, Seymour Heller, he soon bounced back and they selected a careful set of venues that Liberace would play. And with costume designer, Frank Acuna, Liberace crafted an image that hit over the top heights. Mr. Showmanship he became known as because of these kind of costumes. Just look at the, the glimmer off of all the jewels. Trying to keep our shadows out of it, but man, that is cool. 1977, white ostrich cape. You can see the uh, this one's heavily inspired by Elvis on the right. Actually, both of them kinda. 
This is a 1961 Frank Acuna tuxedo suit with tails. Purple damask, it says. And then over here was a 1974 rainbow stone denim jumpsuit. And as we move around, look at all the, how it would glimmer. Think of just all the lights hitting it. Very cool. And then it says that he and Elvis were great friends and supporters of each other, and they have a picture of them together. How the King reinvented the Las Vegas show. That Verace had over the top showman show. Elvis responded and started wearing gaudy gold suits the way Liberace did. You need more glitz in your act. And that led to what Elvis became. I'll say, look at Liberace's shoes. The shoes were even just all the way down. The details are just incredible. It's a painting of, yeah, Liberace kneeling before Archbishop Cushing. Very religious, very, very religious. Here's one of his St. Anthony wood carving figures that he had at his home. It says, in November 22, 1963, in a Pittsburgh dressing room, Liberace attempted to clean a soiled costume and inhaled a toxic amount of dry cleaning fluid. He suffered kidney failure and was given a 20% chance of survival. The situation was so dire that a priest administered last rites. Liberace later recalled being visited by a nun dressed in white who told him that, she should pray to, that he should pray to St. Anthony for healing. Already on dialysis and out of other options, he started to pray and slowly began to recover. When searching later for the mysterious nun, he couldn't find anyone matching her description. Performer reflected often on the incident and even built a shrine to St. Anthony in his Palm Springs home. So that's where this came from. And here's a photo of him with several different religious people, nuns. And these are his prayer books. This one's actually from 1931. Great penmanship. It says, Remembrance of my first Holy Communion from my aunt, 1931. And then over there is one also. Wow. His Holy Bible over here. In case you want to see his handwriting, it was very nice. Then here they're talking about and showing all of his influence on Vegas. From the 50s on, there at the Riviera. Kind of a Ribbon at the Riviera, which is no longer here anymore. With Streisand at the Riviera. Elvis front row at Liberace's show. You gotta love that. There's Liberace looking right down at the king. That's the cool thing I always loved about Elvis. He was always supportive. He never, it wasn't like anybody was a, a threat to his career. He, he always befriended people. And then here he had his brother performing with him, George Liberace. The last frontier. And look at this. This is in a case that's stamped Liberace all over it. And it's got his metal candelabra that he would travel with and put on the piano. Very cool. Glass, this end up. Oh yeah, can you imagine breaking that? A couple of movies that Liberace was in, including Sincerely Yours. They're showing all of his Hollywood days here, and it said he pursued success as an actor. He debuted as a honky-tonk pianist in South Sea Center with my pal Shelly Winters. <laughs> How cool is that? Liberace and Shelly. It says food and music are the best things in life. They have his books over here, his cooking books on display, which he did. He loved to cook for people. He was famous for that. And then there's pictures of him and his mother in the kitchen. Took care of his mother pretty much her whole life. She lived with him and had slot machines in the houses, areas cooking. 
There's his mother, his brother George in the middle, and Liberace on the right. Eating barbecue. <laughs> and take a look at this. Painting of his mother. We're from his house. Table, chairs, place settings, everything. Late 19th century. Wow, look at that. Look at that. Holy cow. Rhinestone piano. And then look at the costume. This was a Michael Travis costume, 1982. White polyester, gabardine, silver lame, crystal rhinestone, square jewels, crystal lock rosen, crystal navettes, pearls, silver beads, and bugle beads. But look at it. Look at the glistening and everything in here. Just look at all. I mean, wow. Even the back, the collar. Think of how heavy this must have been. And then look at the bald one. The piano, it's like a clear seat. Now that's really cool. We have actually sat in that tub at the Liberace Mansion here in Vegas. And uh, look at what they have. They have this that's right up here beside him. That was from the 1978 TV special, Leapin' Lizards. It's Liberace. <laughs> This first major television special from Las Vegas gives a spoofed view of a typical day in his life before he was off to work at Las Vegas Hilton in his mirrored Rolls Royce. But there you can see him with the uh, those crazy kind of like dove swan faucets. And then he's got the kid with the candelabra, the cherub. And it's right here, the same exact one. Very cool. And then look at this collection. It says, Nakedness makes us democratic. Adornment makes us individuals. This is a 1980s Michael Travis ice blue rhinestone cutaway suit. Man. Wow. Look at the sparkle on that though. I mean, geez, all the way down to the shoes. The shoes are exactly like the rest of the suit. And look at this purple one back here. It's called the purple and silver costume. Wow. Pretty dazzling, isn't it? <laughs> wow. But it's probably not as eye-popping as this. The Fabergé cape. Pink turkey feathers, cotton duck fabric, lame, silver bugle beads, crystal rocaille beads, crystal rhinestones, and pearls. 1985. It's got like a little butterfly right in there. I'm sure if you look hard enough, you'll find all kinds of little hidden Easter egg designs in there. And over here, this one's called the Fabergé costume. This one's like a lot more pink and purples, where the other one, that one back there was all purple. 
So, oh, 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 I get it, I get it. They go together. He wore that over top of that one. That makes sense. Look, the uh, brooch is a heart. Man, what a great display they have here for this. The admission, um, if you're a member, it's free, but we weren't, so it was $18.95 a person. Then it says that he collected hundreds of miniature pianos during his lifetime from his travels. Even fans would send them to his home. So they have a handful of them on display here. All very different too. And I believe that was one of the things he, uh, he sold at his shows. I think you could buy like a little miniature Liberace piano. Here's one you can see that has the Eiffel Tower on the top from France. Very cool. All wood. And this one it says he got in Japan. Just wooden paint. It's really nice. That's a really cool one. And then this is something that someone sent him. Um, George Gosh sent him this. It looks like he was the artist and it's Liberace playing the piano himself. So you can see his candelabra and him sitting there. And then this one, he got in India, and it was gifted to him, it looks like, because it's got a uh, an engraved nameplate down here in this thing that looks like a harmonica. It says, Our Superstar, The Baron Gang, Las Vegas Hilton, 1976. And we're not done, because they got a... They're showing his jewelry and everything. That's also stuff you could buy. When they had a museum, you could buy that Liberace ring. But down here, they actually have some of his shoes and bow ties. So look at the yellow shoes with that bow tie, that's great. Patent leather. And the design on uh, what would be like the buckle, that's great. We need more people dressing like that these days. <laughs> Collection of his bow ties. All sequined, of course. Got to be noticed on stage. And here they have some of his monogrammed slippers, as well as some more bow ties. The front one looks like he's made out of silver. And then a pair of shoes. Then over here they're talking about Liberace's effect on pop culture with his slot machine. Unfortunately, it's not the one his mom played, but uh, I'm sure she would have loved to have played this one. He had to stock it, of course, himself, but that was crazy because uh, at the time, you had to have like a gaming license, I think, in order to have one. So he was like one of the few people that uh, was not a casino that had a private gaming license, if I remember right. Then over here they have dolls of him bobbleheads, things like that. And then even Liberace on The Simpsons. Liberace was an integral part of WrestleMania history. And there he is with Sammy Davis Jr. Matt King Cole. Well, this was an awesome experience. I definitely thought it was, uh, it was worth it. I was excited when they said that they were gonna have a few items i wasn't sure if it would be any good or you know what it would be what would be shown but this stuff was really worth it thank you evan webster for becoming my newest patreon thank you all for watching and uh katie and i will see you next time have a great night and goodbye